This video was requested by Retroboy6093. How do we add cutscenes before the level starts? That sounds fun. Let's try it out. All right. To answer the question on how you make a cutscene at the beginning of your level, we're going to use something called Timeline. And uh, so make sure you have Platform Project, the newest version, 1.8.0 installed. Um, you're going to go to the registry and you're going to look for Timeline and you're going to install Timeline. After you install Timeline, you're going to go back to my assets and you're going to install a free asset from Unity called Playables. It's 100% free and it's going to give you some extra um, tracks to be able to use in your timeline to make it possible to make the cutscene. So now that we have this, we're going to need to open up our timeline. So go to Window, go to Sequencing and go to Timeline. And then go ahead and drag that down here so you can see your timeline. But you can see we have nothing here. It's blank. And how you create one is you're going to create an empty. And we're going to call this empty cutscene timeline. You can call it whatever you want. And then we're going to take that. And once we select it, you see how it says create. We can go ahead and create our timeline. So we're just going to call it cutscene timeline. And we're just going to put it in the uh, scenes folder. It's fine. It doesn't matter wherever you want to put it. So now we have this blank timeline. Let's go ahead and lock it so it doesn't disappear every time we click on something. After you create that, it's going to give you this uh, uh, component, which basically allows you to decide if you want it to play at the beginning of the level or as soon as, as, soon as the level awakes, um, or if you want to set this up manually. Okay, so right now we're just going to leave it here because we're going to be playing this uh, cutscene as soon as this level opens. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have um, some type of script set up for how I want it to look when it opens. So the way I look at it is, you know, when when you come into this scene, this is the whole, all these planets and everything, this whole new world, you're going to be like, wow, right? She's going to make some comment about this world. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to set up our cameras. So if you go to your hand camera here and you're going to see this little icon, this icon means that there's a Cinemachine brain on here. Let's go ahead and drag that into the timeline and select the Cinemachine track. So any cameras we put in here now will be controlled by the Cinemachine uh, brain. So it, it's not based on which camera is the lowest, it's gonna be based on what you put in the track and I'll show you that. So we need a, a camera on Lily and this is for the close up for when she talks and we're gonna go here, create a virtual cam. We're just gonna call this Lily cam. Okay. And this camera is gonna be where we see her talking when she first comes in. I'm just gonna adjust the X a little bit so you can see the bubble above her head. So before we get to Lily, we're going to need some kind of like, you know, establishing camera. So let's go ahead and have this establishing camera of the scene. Let's go here. Let's create another virtual camera. And then this camera, this is what this camera sees. So this is going to be establishing shot. You can make this a lot more complicated, but I'm going to make it simple. This is the basics. So first we want to have our establishing shot come in and that one's going to be there for about two seconds, but one second of that is going to be that camera traveling to Lily. Lily's going to have about a second and a half to say something. And then the camera itself is going to move off to the uh, player camera so you can start playing the level. Okay. So let me show you how, what that's going to look like. So come into the scene, there's Lily, she's going to say something and then let's play. Okay. So that's exciting, but she doesn't actually have any communication. She doesn't have a way to talk yet. So now we're going to add a new track and that track is called the um, subtitle track or the text switcher. Subtitle is one that I created for uh, text mesh pro, um, but you can use the one that comes with it. That is just uh, standard text inside Lily. By the way, these cameras will be um, turned on by the timeline, so we don't have to have them turned on to confuse anything. Uh, let's go here and let's go into Lily, and we're going to need to add a uh, way for her to communicate. So let's add a canvas, and then of course right away, as we know, this canvas is going to be gigantic. So we have to change a few things. Let's change this to world space. So this is on her. Let's put our, our Cinemachine, our brain, as the main camera. Maybe a little bit smaller. Um, and then let's go ahead and uh, uh, change the position to zero and zero. There you go. The box is way above her head and let's change Y to zero. 
So inside this canvas, we're going to need a few things. Um, we're going to need to create a background. So we're going to go to UI. We're going to go to image and we're going to make this small. So let's say, let's make this four and 1.5. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pull this up to where we can see it in the camera. And we're going to change it to black. Oops. And we're going to lower the, um, so we can see behind it. It's just basically to help the dialogue pop out a little bit more. But now we need to put dialogue inside of this image, right? So now we're going to create text, UI, XS Pro. And the first thing you'll notice is this text is gigantic. So we need to make this the same size. So four and 1.5, okay. And then what we need to do is we need to make sure that the uh, text fits within the, the box. So right about 0.5 will work, okay. But it's facing the wrong way. So we can turn that around up here. Rotate on 180, so there's our text. And let's tell it we want it to be in the center and the center. Okay, so here's our text. Now, how do we switch this text up? This See this thing we just created here? We're gonna drag this into that. And then we're going to create a, a subtitle clip. That is the length of the time the camera is gonna be on Lily. And we're gonna tell it to say, she's gonna say, uh, what the... Camera's gonna come in, what the... And then out. Now, this canvas needs to be turned on and off. So we're going to do an activation track so that the canvas itself isn't just floating in air all the time. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we need to make sure that the controller can't be controlled while she's in this scene. So you're going to drop Lily down here. You're going to create a signal track and then you're going to create a signal. So we're going to add a signal emitter. Over here, you see where it says create signal. We're going to create a signal and we're going to call this signal uh, turn oops, off controller. And we're going to drag that over there. We're going to say function. We're going to go to the player component and we're going to enable it. Then we're going to come here because we want to be able to play the game after it finishes. So we're going to go here and we're going to go add a signal emitter. We're going to make another one. We're going to turn on controller. And then we're going to go here. Same thing. Player will enable it, but this time we're going to enable it. Now, we're not going to put it right when the camera is adjusted. We're going to do it just after. And the reason is, is this way it gives the, the camera a chance to catch up. So if I did this right, when you play this level, it should do this opening scene. So let's take a look. Play. All right, that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.